So a very warm welcome to you all on what to me is a very exciting and challenging uh, launch of BT Faster Broadband for Herefordshire. I think we all know that the country and the county are going through some very trying times, but I think this is part of the proof that Herefordshire is ready to face any challenge, rise to any occasion, and move towards tomorrow's world. And that is what going to be so important for the whole of the community in which we all live. Um, I've just been bending the ear of a very nice gentleman because I live in northwest Herefordshire, right on the fringe of BT broadband. I had trouble with it this morning and pulled it all apart and put it all back together and then restarted it and it did go. But probably when I get back home, <laughs> it will have gone again. <laughs> so I can't get a promise out of him that um, he'll do that quite quickly, which is rather sad. But I hope you feel that this is also a very exciting launch. I'm very proud to uh, be chairman of Harry Fitcher Council and watch what is going on. They don't get a very good press these days, but I do know that without the dedication and commitment and jolly hard work of Councillor Graham Powell and all the officers who have helped him and will have to help in the future, this couldn't have happened. And I'm not giving, uh, given to praising Councillor Graham Powell hey, hey. Uh, very often <laughs> because he has um, incurred my wrath on one or two occasions. <laughs> but nothing could uh, give me greater pleasure than to hand over to him and personally, on behalf of the council and the community of Herefordshire, to thank him for all the work that he has done towards getting this project launched. Thank you. <laughs> you, you should have been stand, stood in the council chamber or sat in the council chamber a week last Friday when I used a word which the Hedford Times has since reported um, to know that she's not always this nice to me. So, uh, <laughs> but thank you, Owen. Um, well, welcome and thank you all for coming along because um, I was having a little think yesterday uh, about this morning uh, and, it, and it came to me that it's actually nine years. I started this whole thing nine years ago um, because BT decided that when they enabled all of the telephone exchanges in Herefordshire, they would leave five out and the two nearest to me were two of them. Um, and it's gone uphill and downhill uh, since then and it's not in this room but downstairs and I know that many of you have followed this journey <laughs> with as much interest as I have. I can remember uh, um, two or three years ago getting really excited in the room downstairs, um, egged on I have to say by Jesse Norman, um, that we needed to do something different and I laugh with Natalia now who's been the project manager um, because there, have, there were occasions in those days when we didn't always see eye to eye on the way in which things might progress. And I didn't realise in, in, in those days um, that that would lead me to a standing for the council and have everything from lime trees to God knows what wrapped around my neck. Uh, and I do blame Natalia for the whole lot. So you know, <laughs> anything that goes wrong, this is it. So if you want to object, I don't mind, but just bear in mind, it is a downhill slope from there on, I promise you faithfully. Um, what, um, what I'd like to do is, is probably tell you some things that are uh, relatively obvious, but um, when we've finished the presentations, and I'll introduce John in a moment, when we finish the presentations, um, there are a number of people here, we're nearly outnumbered, a number of people here from BT, um, who as you all know are our partner. Um, there are a number of people here from the broadband team from Herefordshire Council, and rather than have three hours of questions and answers all over the place, I know that there are specific questions that people have. Those teams will be here um, to answer any questions we've got. So we'll go through the presentations relatively quickly and then we'll go to uh, allow people to talk to the teams um, and, and ask whatever, whatever questions you would um, like to ask. So if I can make this work, which I hope I can. Um, going back a couple of years, uh, I think it was really important that we decided what our ambition was and what we wanted to do. And 
I've always been um, very conscious of the fact that Herefordshire is different to most other places. It is the most sparsely populated county uh, in, the, in the country. Um, there are people that have, or areas that have, um, a difference in as much as they'll say, well, we have X number of people per square kilometre and all sorts of magic statistics. But the fact is they have large uninhabited areas and we don't have any of those. Um, we have a relatively small population, but it covers the whole county. We, you know, the jam or the butter is spread <coughs> all over the piece of toast and that makes it a real challenge. And I know that over the last uh, 12 or 18 months, some of the BT crew and other potential suppliers found that out, um, uh, some to their cost, that this is probably the most difficult place in the country um, to, to put in broadband. And I was never, ever uh, going to go down a path where we delivered for a few and we picked off the easy bits. If we're going to do something, then we need to do it properly. I recognise that it will take time. There's no point in pretending that we will deliver everything to everybody next week or the week after. But what we don't want, we don't want an interim solution that in three or four years' time we're all back here saying it isn't fit for purpose, it doesn't meet my requirements, the world has moved on and I now need even more bandwidth. So what you can see in front of you is that by 2016, which I admit is a bit later than I'd originally hoped for, but <coughs> state aid and other things got in the way and slowed the process down. But by 2016, 90% of the residences and uh, businesses in Herefordshire, right across Herefordshire, will have access to fibre broadband. That's, that will last us forever. That's not a short-term solution. And I think, having waited nine years to get this far, I don't mind waiting a bit longer to make sure we get something that will last forever. And, and I feel that at this moment in time almost, um, I'm handing the baton on to BT and to the project team you know, for them to deliver it. There's no more that I can do. Um, it's work on the ground and, and as you'll hear it's a really big job. But I do feel and I've always felt that with changes in technology, um, and there will be changes in technology, they're happening all the time, um, with additional funding, and I know, because I, I'm during this process, and you know, you mix with the, uh, the oi polloi, um, although I have to be honest, I, I met the Secretary of State for the Environment, and he was really keen on broadband, that was on the Tuesday, uh, by the Wednesday tea time, for some reason, he seemed to be more interested in horse meat than broadband, but that's a <laughs> different subject. He will get back to broadband eventually. Uh, and we know that the government has another £300 million that will come into this broadband pot, and I want to make sure that we get our share of that, um, and that's one of the routes. Um, there are other funding streams, which we'll, we'll talk about later. There are a lot of things we can do, and I won't, I won't finish with this. Whatever happens... Uh, until absolutely everyone who wants it has access and because I think we need new challenges all the time we need to sort out the mobile issue as well because there's lots of us don't have mobile coverage that may be good or bad for some but you have a choice whether you buy the phone or not so um, so that's where we're going to go that's what our ambition is and we will continue until um, we get there so where are we well we started off and the um, we <laughs> I remember the original ambition for the council, which we laugh about sometimes, had all sorts of numbers in it. But we went back to grassroots, I think, and looked at the European target, which was that by 2020, um, everyone would have access to 30 megabits or more. And you will have noticed on the previous slide, I'm talking about 24 megabits. Um, I use 24 because that's the number that the UK government used. Um, so, you know, never quite be on the same page as Europe. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? Um, Europe used 30. The fact is, I think, with, it, with the exception of about 1% of our total coverage, if you can get 24, you'll be able to get 30. So it's not a, it's not a big issue. Um, so we want to get there a bit before Europe. We'd like to think that by 2018, anybody who wants fast broadband will be able to get it. Um, the government put up £530 million, pounds, which it managed to... Um, save it was going to be used for the digital switchover um, but those that needed help which were anybody above the age of two years older than the oldest person in this room 
um, they all got their grandkids to do it. So we save 530 million by not spending it on digital switchover. Um, there is some more money about, and, and we got a share of that, which you'll see in a moment. And then in December 2010, um, following um, the conclusion of the state aid uh, agreement, which Europe weren't overly <coughs> impressed with at one stage, that's the ability to use uh, government or state money to subsidise what is perceived to be a commercially available service. Um, so once we got that cleared, we signed the contract and, and now we're uh, on the road to glory. Uh, the investments in Herefordshire, and, and you will know that the contract is a joint um, contract between Herefordshire and Gloucestershire. I'm obviously only focused on Herefordshire. Um, I'm sure Gloucestershire will get covered eventually, but as long as Herefordshire is at the front of the queue, we'll be in good shape. Uh, they had their launch yesterday. We picked a nice sunny day for ours. Um, the government put in £10.1 million pounds <coughs> through their delivery arm, Broadband Delivery UK, um, Herefordshire Council put in £10.1 million pounds, and, and that in itself was a journey because the original amounts of money um, worked out by the civil servants using their uh, Excel spreadsheet was that we needed £6 million pounds, uh, and then when they came and had a look uh, and came and had a drive round Herefordshire um, they realised just what sparsity of population meant uh, so we got the amount increased to £10 million pounds, and then I had to go and, um, uh, through the kind offices of the chairman, uh, have another discussion about finding another £4 million pounds off a council, as you'll know, who doesn't have two pennies to rub together. So that was a, in itself a, an adventure. And then um, BT have invested uh, £21 million pounds across the two counties, which collectively, because we're looking for faster broadband, will here enough to be known as Fastershire. Um, I don't really need to tell you what's on the next slide because I can see that many of the people in this room have been to as many of these meetings <coughs> as I have and can probably tell me a lot more about this than, uh, um, than I can. But it is a fact of life that in times uh, of difficulty, which we currently live in, that the ability to be able to access fast broadband is crucial to everything that we do. It's crucial to our businesses to be able to compete in the global market. Um, it's essential for us as a council because it is a far more efficient way to deliver services. Uh, we have a government that actually at this moment believes everybody's already got it uh, and there are some services that you can't uh, access without uh, broadband. And of course there's uh, healthcare, education, entertainment and lots of other services which increasingly uh, depend upon broadband. And, and I will say at this point that one of the things we have to be aware of is there will be people who won't want it, who, who won't be able to afford uh, to have it, or, or just through their own uh, wishes will decide that they don't want it and we must make sure that we don't create another digital divide. Um, so accessing broadband uh, or the services through um, public buildings, through village halls etc is something in our county that we as residents here are going to have to be aware of. Um, so we will become uh, a faster shire. Um, it's a huge job, in fact it's an incredible job. It may well be the biggest engineering job that's ever been un undertaken in the county. Um, so what I'd like to do now is introduce you to John Reynolds, who's BT's Director of NGA, to convince us all that this is something that can be delivered. Um, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Well, thank you, Graham. Um, thank you, Alwyn, uh, for that introduction. Um, so, as, as, as Graham has sort of highlighted, this is, a, this is really big news uh, for Herefordshire today. There's a little small announcement going on in Westminster today as well, but I think this is the really big news for Herefordshire today. The scale of the investment, uh, but also the scale of the task ahead of us is, is enormous, but the results are going to be spectacular in terms of the transformation and change that this will mean for the county. And, um, Congratulations to you, Graham, and the whole team, really, to sort of secure this investment uh, from national government. You're one of the first authorities to basically have achieved that, and BT is delighted to be putting its own investment into the programme and to have been selected as your partner 
to, to run this project with you. And it will be very much a, a partnership between us to achieve those outcomes that you've already outlined. So uh, before we uh, go into perhaps some more detail, uh, we're just going to show you, show you a quick video to give you a feel for some of the things that are going to be happening in the county over the next three years and to sort of really raise the perception that this is a, a big task and why it's a big task. So can we run the, the video, please? The big build to bring fibre broadband to the UK is complex and it takes some time for a town or telephone exchange area to be upgraded. Here's how it works in a typical exchange area. The broadband many of us have today travels on copper lines from the telephone exchange, usually via a green roadside cabinet, to your home or business. The first piece of the next generation broadband jigsaw is the installation of fibre to the cabinet or FTTC technology, which is where fibre optic cable is brought from the telephone exchange building to new green roadside cabinets. From the cabinet, it then travels over the existing copper line into your business or home. Download speeds of up to 80 megabits per second will be possible via this type of connection. In some areas, it will be possible to install another type of cutting-edge technology called Fibre to the Premises, or FTTP. This is the second piece of the jigsaw. Here, Fibre is brought directly from the exchange into businesses and homes, bypassing the copper network completely. This will bring even faster download speeds of up to 300 megabits per second. Next, will come solutions for exchange-only lines. These connect premises which are very close by, or perhaps much further away, directly to the exchange building. Finally, there will be some places where it will not be possible to install a fibre optic connection. OpenReach is trialling alternative technologies to bring faster broadband to these areas, such as wireless, satellite and TV white spaces. OpenReach's advanced copper broadband and Ethernet services will also play an important role as they continue to be rolled out across the UK. Crucially, the OpenReach access network is open to all communications providers. This provides customers with a choice of service provider, keeping competition high and prices low. In reality, each of the technologies that make up the jigsaw will become available in different areas at different times. Not all of one area will go live on the same day, and not every technology will be used in each area. But when the jigsaw is complete, the UK will have one of the best fibre broadband infrastructures in the world, which will last for decades to come. OK, so that's the technology part of the presentation, and hopefully that's given you a feel for the types of things that are going to be happening together over the next three years. Uh, but really the beauty of this technology is that it's going to give the citizens and businesses of the county access to the same sorts of services, the same sorts of speeds as that can already be achieved in places like Hereford or other towns, major cities, London, Birmingham, etc. And, and that's really the big advantage of this programme, that the same sort of services and speeds will be available in the most rural areas of the county. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the technology um, and about the scale of the challenge. I'm also going to talk a little bit about partnership and how this is very much a sort of partnership between us and that by working closely together we can make the most of it and, and really lead to some quite transformational things with the county. Um, and also finally what we can do with that technology. So what's the whole point of it? Why have faster broadband? Why have new services? What, what's the real point of doing it? And that will answer some of those questions in terms of how economic growth can be enabled, how we can perhaps encourage further investment into the county, and how we can generally improve the quality of life uh, for everybody here. So just furthering on the technology piece first of all. So this is probably the most visible part that you will see of the project. As you saw in the film, these green boxes will be installed in areas where there are existing cabinets in place, like the one on the right-hand side there. 
um, in order to get those speeds. Once that cabinet is in place, basically the premises around that cabinet that have copper connections from the old cabinet will be able to access super fast broadband and speeds of up to 80 megabits per second. So you're going to see an awful lot of activity in the county over the next three years. You're going to see an awful lot of people like that sitting in, in, in holes, driving vans around the country. Uh, it will inevitably lead to things like road closures at times. Um, it will lead to sort of you know, planning and, and, and work within the council and getting approval for these cabinets. But, and that's an essential part of this programme. But if we can make the planning and highways process work really, really well, then the speed of the project will be maintained. The biggest single thing that slows these projects down is in terms of planning in highways and, and, and not getting those decisions made fast enough. So it's going to be an incredibly large project, and, um, but one that's going to lead to some large benefits. The work has already started, which is the good news. So we signed a contract in December. We've already started. But it's very important to understand that we have to go through this process. We're not just going to go straight out and put cabinets out on the streets. <coughs> We've got to go through this pre-planning process to assess the network. We've got to prepare the exchanges, so the exchange capability that exists to make sure that um, has enough capability to handle the internet traffic that's going to be generated as, as a result. We've got to plan the network. We're going to have to build new ducting, um, apply for planning for cabinets where they're required, um, and also overground <coughs> equipment as well. Some delivery does take place across um, telephone poles as well. So that process is going to take a number of months to conclude. But the really good news, I think, for today is that the first installations of these cabinets and services will be happening from the late summer. And so by the autumn time, the first uh, uh, areas will be ready to accept orders for super-fast broadband. So that's fantastic news from today. But very important to understand that this planning process has to happen first in order to make sure that the rollout is done in, in, a, in the most value for money way possible. So news on the first locations in the county that are going to benefit uh, from this investment. So very pleased to say that these areas, which are incredibly rural, uh, I've been coming here for about three years uh, as part of this program, uh, talking to the council and, and to Gloucestershire as well. And we have deliberately chosen a number of areas which are uh, extremely rural. And so by the end of this year, under this programme, we'll be looking to cover 10,000 premises in Herefordshire as part of this investment programme. It's also important to note that um, we've got our commercial rollout happening as well. So this is under our own investment where we're enabling Hereford itself and later this year, Ledbury and Leominster uh, are also going to be done. So over 45,000 premises in the county will be enabled for super-fast broadband and those homes and businesses will be able to place those orders uh, from, from the autumn this year. The programme will then work on a number of phased rollouts over a period of time and I'll be saying a little bit more about that, that later on. <laughs> but just to reiterate, the speeds and services um, that will be available in places like Hereford, Ledbury, etc., will also be available in these very rural areas um, as well. We have about um, 70 service providers as well who offer services on our network. So BT is one of those. Um, and that's a very important part of this investment and funding as well. And we also have some of the cheapest pricing in the UK as a result of, of that investment. So these, these prices for these services start at 1649 a month, which in the context of the speeds and the services that are available, uh, in our opinion, is very cost effective. And I think that competition in the marketplace will continue to drive pricing and innovation that exists. In fact, I think one of the latest offers is that is an offer for six months free, uh, free access. So this is what we're going to see going forward in, in these areas. So when will we have news on other areas? Um, so there will be a new website established called fastershire.com. And if you put in a telephone number or postcode into that engine, you will get one of the following answers to when it's coming. So either it will be accepting orders, which is the green one there. Coming soon, that's within the next nine months. 
uh, a future exchange and an indication of roughly when that's going to happen, and under evaluation, which essentially will be for the sort of last 10% or so. Um, and just on that subject, you know, we, we are very, very hopeful that this project will be to able to deliver more than 90% <coughs> during its lifetime. Graham's already alluded to the fact that more funding is potentially available from the UK government. Um, we would certainly co-invest in a, in a future extension of this programme into the last 10% as well. So we're extremely hopeful, and one of our other projects that we have had going for a couple of years under European investment, that's in Cornwall, uh, we made an announcement last week that we'd gone from the initial commitment of 85% coverage to 95% coverage. So this is possible based on the level of experience that we now have in terms of rolling out this infrastructure. Uh, we've now gone past 14 million homes and businesses in the UK. So we've got a lot of experience now about how to deploy this technology and, and how to make the most of it. So I wanted to focus a little bit, uh, as Graham did, on, on you know, what's the point? Why, why have all this bandwidth and speed? Why do people need this sort of speed? And I think from a business perspective, and particularly a small to medium enterprise perspective, of which obviously there are many in the county, uh, as indeed there are in Cornwall, uh, this will be truly transformational. Um, we're already seeing a number of case studies, one of which I've got shortly, of businesses that have embraced this new technology. And they've be either become much more productive, you know, we hear um, leaders of, of businesses in Cornwall talking about, well, you saved me an extra hour a day because I'm not waiting for things to upload, or I'm not waiting for, for files to, to be transmitted, or I can upgrade and update my website much more quickly. Um, I can have staff working from home. Um, so it really is representing a huge opportunity for the people of Cornwall, as indeed I'm sure it will do here. So as an economic driver, uh, if there's improved productivity, hopefully there'll be creation of new jobs as well, and protection of existing jobs. Uh, which is also important. There are a number of examples here, and very happy to talk about those further um, after the presentation. We also, as you probably noticed on the way in, we've got a, a showcase van outside, so please do step on board and uh, have a look at some of the exam real examples of, of how this technology can be, can be best used and some of the things that really can enable businesses to, to do. Here's one business in, in Cornwall that had, has had this technology for about two years, one of our first connected customers called Orbis. They're a very small business um, based in a very rural part of, of Cornwall, and they sell services to the hotel industry and technical services, so telephone and internet services. So what better than when their customers actually talk to them or deal with them that they have some of the best technology themselves. It would be pretty hopeless for them to try and convince uh, hotel chains of different sizes if, if, if the, either the telephone or the broadband service or, the, or the, um, the internet service they have was poor. And this has really helped them act like a big company. They can act like a really professional, world-leading company. And that's helped their, their sales, their business growth, uh, and, their, and their productivity, and they won a, a, a very significant award for that last year in Cornwall, um, at, the, at the Cornwall Business Awards, which was very, very well, uh, very, very well received. Um, but there are examples now, too numerous really to mention, of businesses that have really embraced uh, this, this new technology, <coughs> including places like Northern Ireland, where we've seen a number of new startups happening in Northern Ireland as a result of this technology and really avoiding that situation where if a business wants to grow, they have to move to Belfast. That's just no, no longer happening. They're actually establishing the businesses where they are and growing those businesses and creating jobs in their own immediate community. So just in summary, uh, and to repeat really, this is a huge project. It's a huge logistical challenge. Uh, I'm reliably informed that two and a half kilometres of fibre around the county is equivalent of digging ducts for fibre from here to Hungary and back again. So it's a pretty substantial journey. We need to deploy around 800 cabinets, so the planning work needs to go into that, uh, making sure that we can, we can manage that with highways 
is a really important uh, thing to consider and to, and to get achieved. You're going to see lots of activity happening uh, really from the summertime to make this project a reality. So very large project. We want to work with you in partnership to really make the most of it. Encourage take up, encourage businesses to really make the most of this and, and residents obviously as well, which we think will be a huge enabler for economic growth. Um, will create new investment in the county and really improve the quality of life for everybody here. So thank you very much for your time.